Today this video is about how to make this DIY chunky knit blanket on your zippy loom or any other long loom with the pegs spaced far apart. The steps include number one doing a chain cast on to get our project on the loom, number two doing rows and rows of the garter stitch, number three changing colors and adding new balls of yarn, and number four binding off which means we remove the project from the loom. This blanket is 42 by 47 inches. For this size, and if you use Red Heart Grande, you'll need nine balls of yarn. So this pattern and this brand of yarn requires two balls of pink yarn, one ball of white yarn, and six balls of gray yarn. You'll also need 10 zippy looms and four corners, since we'll be using 44 pegs in total. You'll also need a hook, a pair of scissors, and a yarn needle. You might also need something to mark your first peg and your last peg, such as this green rubber band and red rubber band. This is so you don't accidentally join the sides of your blanket together. So let's start the chain cast on with your pink yarn. You'll begin with a slip knot. You make a loop in your left hand and you hold the tail in your right. With your left hand, grab a bit of yarn from your right and pull it through to make a new loop. That's your slip knot. You're going to put it behind peg number one, which we've marked with our green rubber band. You're going to put your fingers inside that loop from behind those pegs, and you're going to grab a piece of working yarn that's laying out in front, and you're going to make a new loop, which is behind your pegs. Then you're going to put your two fingers back in the loop, and then again, you're going to grab some working yarn that's out in front and you're going to be pulling it through. Again, from the back of your loom, you're going to grab the working yarn, which is in front of the pegs. You're going to pull it through and make a new loop. So with this chain cast on, you are not putting any loops over the pegs. Instead, you are putting loops around the pegs. I'll also mention that I learned about this chain cast on, which you can do with your fingers, from a Good Knit Kisses video called Loom Knit Big Stitch Throw. So thank you to Kristen for that lesson. You should be seeing one strand in front of your pegs and you'll see two strands behind the pegs. And I'm showing you a picture here of what I mean. So on your own, keep going until you're at the end of your cast on row, and I'll show you how to put the last loop over the last peg, which is peg 44. So I've gone all the way around my loom with the chain cast on, and I'm just approaching the end by doing, I'm just doing the last few pegs. And when I get to the very end, I'm, do, I'm just going to take that loop and I'm going to place it over the last peg, which is peg 44, and it's marked with a rubber band. Now I'm going to be ready to start row one with the purl stitches. We'll start with a purl row and then go to a knit row, and that's what makes the garter stitch. So to begin with your purl stitch on peg one, wrap the peg counterclockwise and lay the working yarn below the loop. With your hook, you're going to go through the top loop and you're going to grab the working yarn, which is below. You're going to pull it upwards and you're going to make a new loop. You're going to pull upwards and remove the old loop from the peg and you're going to place the new loop on the peg and then you're going to tighten it. To purl the next stitch, you're going to do the same thing. Your working yarn is below the loop. With your hook, you're going to go inside the loop. You're going to grab the working yarn. You're going to pull the working yarn upwards to make a new loop. Take the old loop off the peg, place the new loop on the peg, and then tighten it a bit. Again, the working yarn is below the loop on your third peg. With your hook, you're going inside the loop to grab the working yarn and to pull it upwards to make a new loop. 
remove the old loop from peg three and put the new loop on peg three. And that's your third purl stitch. On peg four, you do the same thing. With your hook, you're going to go inside that loop and you're going to use the grooves to help you grab that working yarn and pull it upwards. You've made a new loop, so you take the old loop off of the peg and you put the new loop on the peg. And then you're going to tighten it a bit. So you're going to continue with purl stitches on your own. You'll work your way all around the loom until you are back at peg one. We'll meet again to transition from row one, which are these purl stitches, and row two, which will be full of knit stitches. See you soon. So I'm just finishing up row one with two last purl stitches. You can see that my last purl stitch is on peg one, which is marked with a green rubber band. Now I'm going to start a row of knit stitches. So I'm going to do the E-wrap version of the knit stitch by wrapping the peg counterclockwise. And then I'm going to knit over that bottom loop, which means I just bring it over the top of the peg. So as you can see, I'm wrapping the pegs back to front, and then I knit over those bottom loops over the peg. You're going to finish up the pink section by doing a total of six rows in pink. So finish knitting row two, and then purl row three, then knit row four, and then purl row five, and finally you will knit row six. So you'll be knitting on your own, and at the end of row six, we'll meet at peg 44 to change from pink yarn to white yarn. See you soon. So I'm finishing up my row six with my two last E wraps. Those are my knit stitches. And now I want to change the color of my yarn. I want to add some white yarn next. So what you're gonna do is cut off your pink yarn. You just need about four inches or so. And then you're going to be tying a knot. So with the white strand, you go right over left over top of the pink strand. And then you're going to go left over right. and then you're going to tighten it and you're going to try your best to keep your knot a bit close to that peg. So you're going to tighten all four strands. As you can see, that knot is not going anywhere. And then you can simply cut off those tails. I'll also add that making a knot and then simply cutting off the tails is just one way to change colors and add new yarn. That's how I'm doing it for this project. You can use this method if you want when you change from white yarn to gray, line, to gray yarn later, and also when you add more gray balls of yarn since you'll be needing quite a bit of yarn for the middle section of this blanket. But that said, if you want to change yarn in a different way, please feel free. There are so many techniques out there. So for row seven, you're going to purl your way around the loom with your new white yarn. And then you're going to come back in the other direction for row eight as you do your knit stitches. And then for row nine, you're going to start with your gray section. And this is going to be the longest section of the blanket. Now this is what my blanket looks like after using up two full balls of gray yarn in Red Heart Grande. So as you can see, I haven't gained that much length with these two balls. So that's why I'm needing to use multiple balls of yarn. So this is the pattern for this blanket. 
I skipped several rows of gray so the image would fit in the video. If you follow this pattern, you'll work in gray from row 9 to row 66. And then you'll do two rows of white and then six rows of pink, and then we'll bind off. So you can pause your video and let's meet when it's time for you to bind off. This is the photo I took when I was ready to bind off, but I thought I was actually filming. And by the time I realized I wasn't filming, it was too late to go back. So I created a swatch to go through the first steps of removing the blanket from the loom, peg by peg. You're going to begin the bind off process by doing an E-wrap around peg 44, and then you're going to knit over that bottom loop. And then you're going to wrap peg 43, except this time you're doing it clockwise. And then you're going to knit over the bottom loop. Then you're going to take the loop from peg 43 and place it on peg 44. You'll knit over the loop. And then you're going to take that loop and move it over to peg 43. You'll e-wrap peg 42. You're going to knit over that bottom loop. And then you're going to take that loop off and move it to peg 43. And then you'll knit over the bottom loop. And then you're going to move that loop to loop to peg 42. Next, you're going to wrap peg 41, and then you're going to knit over that loop, and then you're going to move it over to the left, and then you're going to knit over that bottom loop, and then you're going to move that loop to the right. Then you're going to work the peg to the right. So you're doing your E-wrap. You're going to knit that over, You'll take that loop off and place it on top of the loop on top of the peg to the left and knit over. And then you'll move that loop to the right. So now I've left the swatch behind and you can see that I'm binding off on my real blanket now. You might notice that I'm binding off quite loosely. I had to practice using the right tension with a few swatches that I made um, before starting this blanket. I knew I didn't want the bind off to squish the blanket together if it was too tight, but I also didn't want to stretch out the blanket if the bind off was too loose. Only practice is going to help you uh, create the right tension, which is why I'm a big fan of creating swatches before starting any knit project. So keep binding off on your own until you reach peg one, and then we're going to weave the ends in together. I'm wrapping peg one, I'm going to knit over, I'm going to move the loop to peg two, I'm going to knit over, then I'm going to cut a tail, And I'm putting the tail through that last loop, and then I'm tightening it. I'm going to remove the loom. So I'm getting the loom out of the way, and I'm taking out my new blanket. I can see these lovely big stitches. And now I need to find my yarn needle so I can weave in that tail. So I'm weaving in the tail through the bind off edge. And then I'm working my way towards the inside of the blanket. And then I'll cut off any remaining yarn. So now I need to find the cast on edge so I can find the tail that's attached to the slip knot. So I'm threading the yarn needle and I'm going up the side of the blanket 
and then I'm going to do a few zigzags before cutting off the remaining yarn. And now I'm finished with my chunky knit garter stitch blanket made on a zippy loom. So I hope you can make a blanket like this or some variation of it. I'd also be happy if I've helped you with any aspects of your knitting projects. If you'd like this tutorial, please like, comment, or subscribe to Ms. Yarn.